So you've got your website built, you've got your MVP, you've got all of your pages, but we've looked at everything right now through a really, really focused marketing and conversion based lens. And that doesn't necessarily have to be the case in the way that you present yourself. When you build out your brand philosophy, your mission, your vision, you often find yourself thinking about how you want people to feel when they come into your office and how when they leave. And we've talked a lot about inserting your perspective and your personality into the brand. And this is the time to start doing that. Writing your website, positioning your website, and putting the content to action doesn't have to be boring. It doesn't have to be like reading a textbook or reading a straight up advertisement. It can have some personality to it. If you want to be whimsical and funny or use puns on the website, a lot of those things can connect with a lot of different people and inserting that perspective and that personality with you will also help a cohesive experience as somebody finds you online, calls your office, sits in your chair, and then becomes one of your patients. Building this out doesn't only have to do with website copy as well. It can have to do with the imagery and the art they use on the website. You can choose to go in a more artistic, illustrative direction or use very modern and sleek grayscale imagery if you'd like to. Having those things marry both with you and your personality, but also the city that you operate in and the kinds of clients that you're going to be bringing in the office all plays into that cohesion. One thing you'll want to do is avoid a lot of stereotypical content. You don't want to do standardized A, B, and C SEO content on your website. A great website with great content will perform. Google's job as a search engine is to return things that people find valuable. And part of that value, and what one of the biggest things they focus on now, is delivering on something that has a great user experience. So we've all done this before. You go, you've got a rush to make dinner for your family, you wanna find a recipe for meatballs. You've got all your ingredients, or at least you think you do, but you've gotta scroll through 3,000 words about the origins of tomatoes and where pasta came from and all these things. Unfortunately, that's SEO done the wrong way. And so what we wanna avoid is having experiences that are taxing and hard to get to what the end goal is. And so when you're building out this copy and making it whimsical or making it super modern, kind of keep that in mind that you don't have to follow the exact guidelines that would fully optimize your site for what somebody in an SEO blog says they're going to do. You can use your personality. You can match things to the way that you want things to feel and do it in a way that would be something you would like to read. Because at the end of the day, your patients aren't all that different than you. They're just a person that has a problem that needs a solution. And making it difficult to get to that solution is something we've touched on a lot and can really harm somebody's website, even if you are super excited about all that content. The other piece to this is leveraging the existing knowledge you have. You've gone to countless hours of courses. You've talked to countless other professionals that do this for a living and mentors and so on and so forth, you probably picked up, whether you know it or not, little anecdotes and nuggets of things along the way that are really gonna connect with your patients. If you've already been screening patients in your general practice, you've already answered some of their questions in person. Well, that question and answer content is really great stuff for your website, and it also helps you refine your message when you're talking to someone in person. If you sit down with a patient and they have the same five questions on repeat with every patient, I'll bet they're Googling that stuff before they even get to you. So having a place for that stuff to live, reverse engineering those discussions you have internally can help you find that perspective if you're having a hard time kind of putting some more personality into the website or finding creative ways to build things, you know more than you think you do. And so by taking some of that and just jotting it down while you're in the process of doing it, you'll find easy ways to find value points, things that connect with patients and move them forward in the process. We've had great examples of this in the past where people always had questions about insurance and they really refined that messaging and put it on the website. And all of a sudden those insurance questions that were coming through during that first consultative call started becoming a lot easier. Not only because the patient connected with the answer that was on the site, but also because they practice it a lot. The people that are answering the phone, you as the practitioner, they all knew the path. And that's part of that brand cohesion that will build out and help you grow the brand. We've had great examples of reverse engineering those experiences and turning them into FAQ data. One of these great examples is one of our clients who constantly got insurance questions during their first consultation and on phone calls and on form submissions coming through. They refined the messaging, started connecting what moved people forward in the process when they were talking to them in person and started putting that back on the website. In fact, listing it directly under the call to action to show what insurances were taken, how they would work with insurances, so on and so forth. And all of a sudden, 
those insurance conversations became a lot easier. One easy way to take these experiences and your perspective and kind of build it and flesh it out a little bit more is with the use of AI. There are tons of AI copywriting tools out there where you can enter a prompt, enter a short summary, and they will help you write that content in a way that is positioned based on some sort of prompt. So it can be a whimsically written or it can be very informative. Um, and there's often many options out there and many different frameworks for you to build it in. One word of caution with AI and using it for copywriting is there is a finite amount of information that most of these AI tools pull from. And if you do it over and over and over, you'll notice there are some pretty common themes on this copywriting. So the best way and the most effective way we found to use it is just as a starting point. And then you take the result of it, kind of refine your queries and refine your prompts to get the kind of information you need, and then proofread and copyright a little bit on top of what they provide. Because a lot of people use AI as a crutch as something that can be done quick and easy. But if there are 10,000 dentists in the nation using AI for the same prompts, a lot of those websites are gonna end up looking the same. So to use it as a tool to get you to a place where you feel good about adding more of your perspective in there, and then publish it to the website rather than just publishing it directly on. So using all of these things and inserting that perspective is a great way to set your brand apart and again, connect it with yourself and your team. And so don't forget about all the things you know and how all of the experience you can bring in to how this website is positioned and how you connect with those patients.